bring in Paul Biancardi, National Recruiting Director for ESPN, former Horizon League coach of the year at Wright State. He's a college basketball analyst, NBA draft analyst. Paul, great to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you guys for inviting me. Let's start with Colin Chandler because you were uh, the guy on the Instagram live with him and you have this relationship with him and, and you cover the game. This was a huge get for BYU. What was it like to kind of see the evolution of Colin Chandler as a player and then he ends up choosing BYU? Yeah, I had a chance to see Colin Chandler numerous times and put him in our ESPN rankings, which is a pretty prestigious place to be uh, pre-summer. I believe he was 77. And then after this summer, he was just fantastic. He took his game to another level. He was already really good in terms of scoring the ball for the Utah prospects. Uh, he could make tough shots. He could score big numbers. Uh, he's a team guy. That, that's what really attracted me to him is with all his talent and all his statistics, he's still a team guy. He makes the right play at the right time. Uh, I bumped him up into the uh, high 20s in the class, and that's a very, very elite spot. He comes in to BYU after his Mormon mission. I mean, he's going to be a difference maker from day one. He'd be a difference maker if he went to college next year. That's how good he is. Yeah, and part of me wishes he would, but obviously uh, Tyler and I <laughs> went on missions. We know the value of what a mission can do for you in your life. Um, 50 spots is a massive jump, Paul. What did you see that made you feel like he earned a 50-spot jump? Consistency. Brought it every game. Uh, and he does he does it in different ways. I mean, it's the three-point shot. It's the drive. He can make the assist. A much underrated passer because, as Tyler knows, a lot of guys get reputations on how they score the ball. He can really pass it. Now, his defense must improve. He recognizes that. But offensively, he has a gift to put the ball in the basket, whether it's in transition or in the half-court set. You run plays for him, or he can take a broken play and make something happen. Uh, he's one of the best guards in the country. Absolutely. Uh, BYU so excited to have him. Um, you know, I think it's unique that he exploded onto the scene. I mean, generally, I mean, this is my feeling that most top 100 recruits, you know, I, I mean, they're, they're, they're a top 100 recruit for a while, right? I mean, is he pretty unique in that he exploded so late and had so many big schools chasing him? Well, I think he, he, as he mentioned on the um, Instagram Live, he started to get recruited late in his sophomore year from the high level. A and then it started to happen even more so, more intense, as you know, when he was a junior. I think once you get on that national stage in the summertime, you have a, ch you have a chance, you have an opportunity, you know, to play against the best players in the country, and then you can see how you do, how your team does. And him playing with the Utah prospects was really important, guys, because – he played with other really good players and, and they played a team game. So many times I see, you know, ragtime pick up basketball in the summer and, and it's hard to see a player's traits. And, and you asked me why he made the big jump. Part, part of Colin Chandler's DNA, I believe, is that he, he loves the game. You know, he plays with a certain joy to it. And once he got up into that ranking area, he kept that spot. But you're right. Usually guys sometimes start out early and stay ranked throughout their career. Some guys get ranked early and then fall off because they can't manage the expectations from Colin Chandler getting getting good at the right time. Paul Biancardi, National Recruiting Director for ESPN, joins us on BYU Sports Nation. There were some big names that Colin could pick from. Grew up a Utah fan. Dad's still a Utah guy. Wore a black shirt instead of a BYU shirt. The rest of the family wore the BYU gear, which was fun. <laughs> He'll come around in time. But uh, th this was BYU beating out the likes of Gonzaga and Arizona and Oregon and, and Stanford and Utah. This was a big get for the Cougars. Did you have a sense of how BYU won this in the last couple of weeks? Well, first of all, I really didn't know where he was going up until the last couple of days. I, I had no idea. I, I really believe, though, it was between Utah and BYU. I think that tennis match went back and forth a lot. And that speaks volumes to both of the programs because you have Oregon, Arizona, Gonzaga, basically all those schools in the Pac-12 and Gonzaga really wanted them. And I'm sure there were schools in other conferences as well. He just kind of narrowed that down uh, to West Coast schools. So, I mean, for, for him to, to be where he was and for the BYU to get him, ultimately he told me the staff, Mark Pope, Burgess, and the rest of the guys just showed him a level of experience at the NBA level 
that could help him get there. That's his ultimate goal someday, as most great players all want to play in the league. I think Colin Chandler felt most comfortable with the BYU staff helping him develop over time. Paul, what what are uh, Colin's chances of, of, of making uh, the NBA at this point? I mean, uh, evaluate his talent from, from that perspective. Well, he's a long way away. I mean, he really is. Just because you're ranked doesn't mean you're going to be an NBA player. It just means that you're a really good player now in high school and you have a chance to impact the college game. And then there's an opportunity uh, to get drafted. So for Colin Chandler, lots of development. He has to change his body. Uh, who better than Eric Shork, strength and conditioning coach? Shout out to my man, Eric, who worked for me at Wright State and St. Louis. He's got to change his body. He's got to change his defensive mindset, the approach to the defensive end. And then offensively, he's got to become more efficient and uh, polish up his skills. He, he's got to keep that high level of competitiveness. I think he has a real chance, guys, uh, to be an NBA draft pick. Where that will be, uh, it's so hard to predict right now. It's so hard to project. But I do see Colin Chandler as an NBA draft pick. Uh, when he gets back on the court, I can tell you a little bit more how closer he'll be. Yeah, he's three years away from playing, and then he needs at least a year or two, you'd think. So we're like five years out from this conversation. But I didn't realize Eric Shork worked for you. That's super cool. We love Eric. He's doing great work here at BYU. We're, we're super lucky to have him. Um, in terms of hey, recruiting. Hey, let, let, him, let him work you out. He'll make you stronger and faster. <laughs> hey, I, I don't think you'll like him as I'm much after this, the work. Yeah, I'm on this side <laughs> for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's got a great personality, too. He's, he's fun. In terms of recruiting battles, obviously, Colin being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a big deal in terms of being, BYU having access to a kid like that, right? But BYU's Big 12 invite, what does this mean for BYU in recruiting, especially basketball? Because as we know, Paul, this is the best league in America, and it will still be when uh, the four teams enter and Texas and Oklahoma leave, it would seem. Hey, it's a big-time conference. It's going to stay a big-time conference, even with the exit of, of Texas and Oklahoma, as you mentioned. And that was a big attraction of Colin Chandler. See, all the guys that are really talented and ranked, uh, they want an opportunity against the best. And for BYU to go into the Big 12, uh, Colin saw an opportunity to play against the likes of Baylor and Kansas State and TCU and Texas Tech and, and then still stay at home. And I think that was a big, big uh, selling point. And the fact that he's going to go on a mission – and then when he comes back, they're already in the conference. Uh, that was huge. The staff was big. Obviously, the B BYU alumni, as you guys know more than anyone, uh, how strong of a foothold they have in the state. And that was attractive because Colin understands that, you know, when his playing days are over, uh, he's going to rely on the BYU alums as well as his education and his personality uh, for, for employment opportunities. And BYU certainly has an influence in that area, as you mentioned. Okay, let's let's ask you about Cleveland State, the Horizon League champs. You were the coach of the year at Wright State, super successful there. I think some people got a sense of what that meant, uh, that win on Tuesday in the season opener, but I don't know if people fully understand it because Cleveland State had five seniors. They all come back, they came back, they won the league. That was a pretty good win, maybe an underrated win for BYU on the opening night. Yeah, great win. First of all, college basketball this year is, is probably going to be the oldest it's ever been because of the COVID factor, everybody coming back. So teams are going to be really experienced. You're going to be playing against 23, 24-year-olds. As you guys know, being with BYU and, and, and the kids go on a mission and come back, how much tougher, stronger-minded those kids are. When I, was at Cleve when I was at Wright State, we played Cleveland State. They weren't very good at the time. Dennis Gates has really resurrected the program. And he's got kids that are really like, I call them alley cats. They just come at you. Uh, they're tenacious. They play hard. They've been successful. Uh, he grew under Leonard Hamilton of Florida State, so he has, a, he has a style and a philosophy. Anytime you win a game in the mid-majors against a team that has won their league or is predicted to win their league in the future, that's a great win. It was a great toughness win for BYU because Cleveland State, has this mantra, and they really play hard all the time. They're really super aggressive. Uh, so kudos to BYU. Great win. Paul, um, what are your thoughts on Coach Pope and, and the program that he's building? I mean, uh, two NCAA tournament appearances and two top 25 finishes. I mean, he's building something special here at BYU. He really is. Um, Mark's a, a really energetic guy 
and uh, he knows what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. The recruiting has been sensational. You know, some guys like Alex Barcelo, um, you know, you, you get him back on a transfer situation. You get the right transfers. You get the in-state players. You, you know, you hire a staff around you that are not yes men. You can't have yes men around you if you're going to be good in college athletics or, or good at any level in coaching. You guys know that. So I think Mark challenges himself with his staff um, and, and just the direction he's taken this program. It, it's been really, really fun to see. Um, I don't want to say this to um, make BYU fans, you know, a little anxious, but, you know, if he gets real successful, you don't know where he's going to go from here. No, that's what we've been thinking. And the Big 12 thing uh, maybe helps with that, which was, oh, maybe he's more enti- Maybe BYU can't afford to pay him more and he's enticed to stay should BYU get to a Sweet 16. You kind of need to win two games plus to get real attractive. Like Mark Pope's on the rise. At what point is he not on the rise and he's risen? Um, but but we'll see. I do want to finish with this. BYU and San Diego State tonight. That was BYU's best win by net ranking uh, last season on the resume to get BYU a six seed. Tonight, San Diego State comes in having defeated the UC Riverside team. That made the buzzer beater last night no. against Arizona State, which was crazy. What are your yeah. thoughts on the matchup tonight in the Merritt Center? place is going to be rocking first of all great to have fans back and the marriott center is an awesome place for a game you got to be good with the basketball the key to byu success tonight in my opinion is going to be the the turnover game if you limit your turnovers and points against turnovers san diego state you know we know they're long and athletic and, and their calling card is their defense but their ability to get deflections to take your vision away you know this is the game within the game and so you have to be really tight with your passing and ball handling. You can't be casual with the ball. Uh, it's going to be the offense of BYU against the defense of San Diego State. BYU had 14 turnovers on Tuesday. Got to got to trim that number down. Paul, we appreciate the time, man. Good stuff with Colin Chandler, of course, and some insight into the Horizon Lake. And, of course, Eric Shork. All right, guys, let's do it again. Okay, thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. We appreciate it. Paul Biancardi from ESPN, National Recruiting Analyst. Um, he does great stuff. He was with Colin Chandler on the Instagram Live. Mm-hmm. and.